If you're considering Amazon, then for you, here are three things that you should look into before jumping into that business. So the very first thing that a lot of people look into when wanting to start an Amazon business is, you know, what is the process that go into it? Number one, what is the time? Number two, what is the money required to start such business? Um, so if you are looking into wanting someone to run your business for you and get into Amazon done for you services, which there's a bunch of them out there, the very first thing that you should know is the money part. So obviously, you know, money, you're, because you're gonna have someone do the work for you, it's just gonna come at a higher cost, where if you did the work yourself, it obviously would be lower cost because you're investing your time. From my experience, um, from what I've seen in the marketplace, this number is a minimum of 25 to 50K. So this is kind of where it starts, right? It goes anywhere between 25 to 50K. This is kind of, you know, the, the lowest that I have personally seen it. Now, I've also heard of, you know, services that are as high as 100K. I'm not exactly sure what they offer, but this is kind of one thing that you have to look into is the fact that it actually costs a decent amount of money to start. Now, on the other hand, if you were to start your own Amazon business, even if you were to get a coach, say BJK University, um, this would be slashed in a, in a third, right? You would probably only need about five to 10K, right? Now, the second thing is time. So obviously a lot of people would be interested in done for you simply because they're not investing their own time in the business, right? Um, they, you know, you're paying somebody and then that somebody is going to do it for you, right? So for you, this would be a plus for you. You know, it's almost like passive, right? This is almost like, you know what? This is like passive income. I put money into a, um, you know, I give money to a company and then they go out there and they do it for me. They do all the work for me. You know, maybe you're someone busy already, you know, have a business. Uh, maybe you have a, a full-time job and, and you make, you know, high six figures. You've got some money sitting in the bank. So, you know, obviously this would make sense for you. Now, look, if you're enjoying the content so far and if you're new to the, to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also smash that like button to um, help the algorithm so this video can actually rank in the algorithm. Now, the third thing that I want to go into is leverage, right? Um, the thing that is very important for when you're starting a business is even if you don't have in mind um, a, an exit strategy, even if you don't have in mind that, you know what, at one day I want to sell this business, um, you should be able to and you should be planning at some point that should I ever want to exit this business because my interests are just not aligned anymore, I want to do something different, maybe bring on a, a partner where they are the CEO of the company and then you go on to do something else. It's very important that you set yourself up for that kind of stuff, right? And so when it comes to leverage, when you're trying to get a loan, for instance, when you're trying to get investors, if you're trying to get, you know, uh, venture capital money, if you're trying to, um, again, bring on a partner, what they're going to look at is they're going to look at the long term, uh, you know, profitability and revenue of this business. Now, here's the issue with done for you businesses is that 95% from what I've seen, actually more like 99% of the, the done for you services that I've seen out there, they do drop shipping on Amazon, right? Now, if you don't know, now you know that drop shipping on Amazon is against terms of service. So that's the big issue here is that it is against TOS, right? It is against TOS for you to drop ship on Amazon. Amazon does not like it simply because, you know, a lot of people would go buy products from Walmart or other retailers and then sell them to Amazon and Amazon customers just do not like that. So as an investor, if I were to look at your business and your business has a risk of getting shut down just like that, I would be really reluctant to invest in your business or even give you a loan if I am a lender, right? Because your business could, you know, although numbers may look great, but they might just, you know, they might just um, like, your business might shut down at some point. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I just remembered, I'm gonna give you a bonus number four 
But what I want from you is subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So the fourth thing is the fact that the profits, profits are very slim, right? Now, I could run a business that does $20,000 per month and make more money than a business that does $40,000 a month simply because my profits are higher, right? Now, as a startup business, you shouldn't be looking into profits. You should be looking into um, you know, sales and you should be looking at, well, how do I rank and so on and so forth. But profits over time will be important because if the business is losing money or profiting very little, you know, you're gonna be putting in all this time and effort into it and it's just not going to, um, like, it's just not, you're not gonna have the, the energy to keep going, right? Because it's like, well, what am I doing all this work for? Usually, a done for you business profits are anywhere between five. The highest I've seen them are 15%. Now, usually they're more like five to 10%, right? So, five to 10%, say if you, like, if you work a nine to five, um, and say you make $5,000 per month, and you've got, let's say, $40,000, um, saved to the side that you want to invest in uh, in a done for you business. Um, for you to replace your, fi your, your for you to replace your your nine to five, your you know to make five thousand dollars from this business. This business needs to make fifty thousand dollars per month in order for you to, to, to add a ten percent profit. Not just that, but usually the done for you services will charge you anywhere between twenty five to forty five percent. So usually the done for you services will charge you anywhere between you know 25 to 40 percent. So if you make five thousand dollars per month in net profits from your business because it's making fifty thousand dollars in revenue and profiting ten percent, well now this 5k all of a sudden you know you're they're going to take out 1250 because this is their you know and that's if they only took 25 percent. Some of them take 30, 35, 40 percent, right? So if that's the case, then really your business needs to make more like 60, 70, $80,000. And in order for a business to make $80,000, you need to have at least 30 to $50,000 invested. So on top of the initial 25 to 50 K that you invested for to pay the services and to get going, you also need to invest another, you know, 40 to $70,000 just in inventory for the business to be generating 60, 70, 80,000. So you can make $5,000 a month. Where say if you're running a private label business, um, if a business is profit, you know, if a business, if you want to make five thousand dollars a month, the business only needs to make about twenty thousand dollars in in revenue, because we run those businesses at a twenty five to thirty five percent profit. But even if the lowest part twenty five percent, you know, you only need to really make a fraction of what this business makes and have a fraction of what this kind of business, um, you know, has in 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 working capital stuck in there. And one more point that I wanna share with you guys today is, but before I do that, right below this video, there's a link to a short presentation that'll break down to you exactly how we do private label and how we're able to scale businesses to the six figure mark, you know, um, without dealing with all this stuff, without having hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up. So click on it and then you can um, get on a call with one of our team members where you can ask questions and figure out if that model is right for you. But the thing that I was gonna go into and explain to you guys is the fact that, look, there is no business that's passive, unless if you have money in stocks. And even then, when you have money in stocks, like you're not controlling the, the, the outcome. You know, you might control the inflow, which is how much money you invest in that business, but you're not controlling the outflow. And what I mean by that is, the CEO of the company could be some idiot that doesn't know what they're doing and then pull the plug on something stupid and then there goes your five or 10 or $20,000. I would rather invest in a business where I control the inflow and the outflow. I control how much work goes in. I control how much effort I put in, right? And if you, if you're like, if you wanna, if you wanna have a business, you shouldn't have people run it for you. You should be doing the thing because what if this company that's running your business goes out of business? Then you're stuck with, say you're doing $100,000 a month 
and say your profits are 20% and you're, you know, after their fees, you're making $15,000 and everything is great. And then this company, for whatever reason, they go out of business, right? Because they have hundreds, if not thousands of other stores that they're running and maybe yours is successful, but you know, 90 others are not, right? Or something happens and this company goes out of business, partners get into fights, whatever, you know, happens. Now you're handed over a business that you don't know how to run, you know nothing about, right? So for me, I would rather have something that I know what I'm doing, or if you have extra money, just go invest it in stocks, go invest it in crypto, right? Uh, go invest it in real estate maybe, um, and probably REITs, because real estate, again, is not passive. If you're looking for passive income, they do not exist. Unless it's a stock or a bond, it's not really passive. Anything else, there is some type of effort that needs to be put in. Some things require more effort, some things require less effort. Hope this video found you well. Again, if you found value, please smash that subscribe button. Also, if you want to learn from us, be sure to click the link below and check out that presentation. See you on the next video. Take care.